guys. I'm going to walk you through the rebuilding of this rack here. This is my video recording and live streaming rack. As you can see right now, it's a little bit of a mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect each of these outputs and inputs into a patch bay uh, that'll be really made up of basically like a pass through, but I'll use it like a patch bay. Okay, let me show you what's inside here. Uh, way back in is the ATEM switch. Uh, all of its inputs are really hard to access the way this is set up. It's such a shallow um, unit that it's just really hard to reach way back in here. Those are Extron uh, receivers and EDID boxes. I can tell you about those later. Um, that's the back of the Duo View. That's an Extron IN1608 switch. If you notice those cables, uh, these are spliced together to give me one additional power supply uh, if I have another unit. Okay, this is a better look of these Extron devices. These are um, HDMI to Cat5 transmitters and receivers. These are actually just the receivers um, and they're connected to EDID boxes, but this allows me to transmit HDMI over Cat5 cable for um, up to 200 or 300 feet. Um, this is the power supply unit that I've spliced uh, in order to give me an additional power supply on um, uh, location if I need it. Bring that around, you can see that down here. Okay, this is the, um, the two Blackmagic devices, the Blackmagic power supply. Done basically the same thing with this one. Um, cut it, spliced it so that I can power two devices um, from the one power supply, just a matter of convenience. I think actually one of my power supplies broke and I ended up splicing the two together, but it works pretty good. There you can see the cable. Um, one goes to the ATEM and one goes to the Duo View. Pretty straightforward. Okay, here we're, we're getting into the rebuild now. I've got just the two receivers and the one EDID device um, repositioned on this, uh, this rack. One power supply uh, that will power all three of those devices. Uh, that's the little spacer. You can see here each of these units and power supplies, these little Extron boxes are screwed directly into that rack. Uh, keeps them pretty secure. Okay, all screwed in. You can see everything's sitting pretty good. Okay, this is how I have the rack laid out now. Uh, with the Duo View on top and the IN1608 directly below that. Um, and then the power supply, which I don't normally do in that position. Um, and then the transmitters, receivers, and EDID on the very bottom. Um, here's the back. Um, so the, the EDID and the receivers on the very bottom, uh, because all the stuff is going to be patched uh, on the back, um, I'm not going to need to access this stuff. So it doesn't really matter too much. Um, but anyway, I've got the cables hanging off the back there. They're going to be connected to these um, faceplate things that are really used for something else. I could explain that more. If you have questions, just leave me a comment. We can talk about it. Yeah, real quick, I thought I might just mention um, these short IEC cables and little extension cables um, that just really cut down on the amount of cable that's needed inside the rack. Um, and also makes it easier when you've got a power brick that won't fit in very well. You can use that extension to just take that brick off of the power supply by a few inches and um, place it wherever you need to. Here is the Ethernet connection from the ATEM going into the Duo View and then back out of the Duo View and that'll go um, to the Ethernet connection on my laptop for control. Okay, here is the program view and the multi view, um, the SDI out of the ATEM switcher to the SDI in on each of the smart view windows. Okay, I'm going to connect USB to both the ATEM switch, boink, boink, and the smart view. 
the male end is going to go to the USB female to female pass through that will be mounted on the back of the rack used for my patch bay. Uh, this is the USB male to male cable I'll need. Okay, I want to touch on the AES EBU input. I've got a BNC cable connected here that I'll connect to um, my patch bay. That'll let me connect uh, an audio interface directly to the ATEM and add some different audio inputs and outputs. And then the rest of these cables for now are, are just the cables that I'll have connected to my patch bay. Here's some of the HDMI pass-throughs I'm going to use for my patch bay. And hopefully you can see that pretty good. I'm going to end up using a bunch of these for all of my patch bay connections. Tighten them down. Uh, here's one finished. Here's another that I'll have my AES EBU. Um, my RJ45 or Ethernet connection. Okay, here's a couple more shots of these pass-throughs connected, the HDMI, uh, the USB, and the Ethernet RJ45. Labels. So you're probably getting the idea here of what's happening. All my pass-throughs getting labeled. Uh, I've made some connections to the IN1608. There's a VGA, um, a couple of HDMI inputs. These will all go through my pass-throughs. Um, there's some DTP ins, DTP outs, and the HDMI outputs. Okay, I'm going to plug in a Cat5 cable to this DTP in. That'll allow me to use that as an input from the IN1608. Here's the pass-throughs labeled and connected. And I've started to attach some of them to the back of the rack. I wasn't sure how to attach them, so I just put two lacer bars and just using zip ties to try to fit them all in basically in a 2U rack space. Okay, this thing is coming together a little bit now. I've got the pass-throughs uh, zip-tied to two lacer bars pretty much in place, need to be trimmed, uh, and then um, just a 2U cover at the bottom, uh, a vented cover as you can see. And this is me trying to find the zip tie while holding the camera, nailing it. Boom, did it. There's another one. Boom, did it. Wait, there's another one. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is the front. It's all built, looking mighty pretty. Uh, if we come around to the back, you can see uh, all the pass-throughs that I'm going to use basically like a patch bay. Uh, the ATEM is right on the top. Uh, the, below that are all of my connections. And it's a bit of a jungle probably to look at, um, but they're fairly organized. And then the bottom is just that vented uh, rack space. I've got a couple of um, power outlets hanging out on one side. Um, can connect whatever I need to uh, on location, whether it's a laptop or whatever, and then just the main power over here. Okay, we have the Mac connected to the IN1608 input 3. Okay, so here's the output of the 1608. And that will go to the HDMI in of the ATEM switch. Uh, so let's come around the front. Okay, and there you have 
uh, input 3 on the IN1608 coming into camera input 4 on the ATEM uh, of course the whole point of the IN1608 in the setup is um, the scaler and the ability to um, have additional inputs switched before hitting the ATEM so I can use the laptop for a media player um, I can use it to catch content from someone else's laptop if they have a PowerPoint or something like that. So here again is the power outlets out of the rack and I've got the hardware encoder plugged into one at this point um, for live streaming and I might have my laptop plugged in the other. So another use for that is to connect um, another rack. This is my audio rack and I will explain that a little bit. Uh, I have an Apogee Ensemble on the top and then a Presonus Digimax um, uh, patch bay power supply. Pretty straightforward. Okay, now you can see I've got this BNC cable connected. That's just a BNC to RCA that goes to the SPDIF. I've got a, um, I guess a male-to-male -male BNC barrel here. Uh, it's just a regular BNC female-to-female -female cable. And then I'll just connect it like that. And that makes it really easy now to connect uh, this additional audio rack if I need it. Basically just run the HDMI out of the program that is not labeled here. Um, whoops and that will go right into the encoder and then yeah I can plug in headphones uh, to that headphone jack and monitor uh, everything that's going to be streamed all the audio okay another thing I need to show is the USB connection from the ATEM switch going to the computer and that's necessary uh, if I'm going to record from the ATEM switch, which I do often. Uh, there's a few different codecs that are available, but it will record um, H.264 straight from uh, the ATEM. Um, but th with the way I have this patched, I need to have a male to male, there it is, male to male USB so that I can connect that directly into my laptop. Or, again, if I'm using my audio rack, um, I'll have to do another video about this rack, but I have um, a, a hub in here. The back is kind of a wreck, but um, I can then connect. Um, it's got some USB ports, so I could connect the USB there. Um, you can see how I've got the Ethernet connection. Um, between the ATEM devices in this rack and this hub and then all of that uh, passes through Thunderbolt to the laptop so that's pretty slick because then I just have basically one connection to the laptop uh, one Thunderbolt and that connects my Thunderbolt audio interface control for the ATEM switch USB for recording um, and it actually leaves me oops, it actually leaves me with one additional Thunderbolt port that I can connect a Thunderbolt um, external hard drive for recording um, and a few other things that make that pretty handy um, so that's pretty much it um, let me know if you have any questions um, or want me to do any more videos on this setup right here. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more like this.